We were in no way ready to fight a major war. As you can tell here, the soldiers, are they look fit. They look ready to go. But the problem is there weren't enough of them. It would be at least a year after we declared war before American troops would arrive in any kind of numbers to make a difference. Which infuriated the American commander-in-chief. This is General John J. Pershing. Notice he has six stars. The only other American general with that distinction is named Washington. Uh, Washington, as in D.C., was taking its sweet time in getting the army ready, trained, and over to France. In fact, at the War Department, they were still working nine to five hours as if it were peacetime. This enraged Pershing. Didn't make our allies too happy either. The uh, Americans were expected. It was almost as if they were that a pony the British and the French wanted for Christmas, and instead they were getting a mouse. And a badly armed one. We had no helmet of our own. You saw our soldiers wearing those smoky bear hats. Our helmets looked so much like British helmets because that's what they were. Our tanks were French. So was our light machine gun. You saw one of them being used by a Marine in that film clip. That's impressive. We would have no heavy machine gun until the Browning machine gun late in the war. Here, our doughboys are being trained by a British soldier on how to use their Maxim gun. And boy, the Germans must have loved to see American flyers go into battle. But there's one thing that Pershing is firm on. He and Wilson, President Wilson, both agree they will not allow any American doughboy, which is the nickname that our soldiers had during World War I, to fight under the command of a French or British officer. The Americans, Pershing insists, will fight as a unit under the command of Americans. Well, that decision eventually will be taken out of John J. Pershing's hands because in the spring of 1918, the Germans will launch a massive offensive all along the Western Front. This is called the Peace Offensive, and its planner, General Ludendorff, wants to knock the French and British out of the war with one last hammer blow before the Americans are ready. Well, the French and the British are so desperate that Pershing agrees to turn American troops over to their command. They're rushed into battle to plug holes in the line because if they aren't there in large numbers, the Germans are going to win the war. The Americans arrive in large numbers. There are now a million American soldiers at the time of the peace offensive, and they die in almost perfect formation, as if they're on parade. They don't know what they're doing. But two divisions will play a, a large role in stopping the peace offensive, the 1st Infantry Division and the 2nd Infantry Division. And it's to the 2nd Infantry Division that the Marines are attached. And the Marines and the Germans will meet each other at Bellow Wood in June 1918. 